I just can't do it because I can't get in and out with one arm. There is maximum commitment. There is no holding back. Do you hear me? What's up guys? So we are here today at Vinos Gym in Dubai. Um, as you can see, I'm still one-armed, but today we're gonna do a leg workout for you. Um, I'm gonna do some of my favorite exercises. Unfortunately, obviously I cannot train as hard as I used to because of the current injury, um, meaning that the loads are gonna be much lighter and not as intense as they used to be. So I'm mainly gonna concentrate on leg extensions, hamstring curls, mainly seated hamstring curls again because obviously I can't lay down. Um, I'm going to be using the linear hack squat because I can kind of just move my arm a little bit between my legs. You know, I can't get full range of motion, but it allows me better depth than using a hack squat because again, the normal hack squat would go on my shoulder, therefore depressing my chest, which is not a good idea right now. So it's going to be very different from normal. I'm going to be choosing certain exercises that are okay for me to be able to push pretty hard, you know, get a good pump keep the blood flowing and be able to keep my legs from atrophying from the, the injury because I am noticing that my weight's dropping and that's not what we want, right? So I just want to keep, be able to keep as much muscle as I can until we're back in the gym at full pace. So today, um, I will take you through the workout and I hope you enjoy it. Please like, subscribe and keep following me because we're going to film everything on this journey and I hope it helps you all a lot. Here we are, leg extension. Um, quite a lot of, let's say, people are doing a leg, leg extension very incorrect. Um, the speed and the tempo of the reps are very fast. And as you see, the form is really bad. There's a, a few top tips that I, used to, uh, I like to use when using a leg extension. One of them is from my ankle to my hip. I want to try and keep in a straight, straight, straight line as, as much as possible, you know? So I want to keep my, my ankle to my hip in a straight line as much as possible. I also want to be sat upright with my chest up and I want to be holding onto the handles and pulling my bum down into the seat. So obviously I don't have two hands, I only have one hand. So me pulling myself down is a bit of a struggle right now, but so I sit upright, pulling myself down into the seat and I'm coming up. A very controlled speed, like so. I also want to be pointing my toes towards my head, trying to contract and shorten my quads as much as possible. So, pull yourself down, nice and slow. I always start with like 15 to 20 reps when I'm doing leg extensions, because it's not about the load, you know, it's about getting the blood into the muscle, contracting very well, and getting a good pump. I also like to keep these static holds, isometrics at the top. Squeeze really hard, just to try and fill them up with more blood. Also have a bit of struggle right now. Having one hand, I can't really put the weight on when I'm sat down, so I have to get up. <laughs> so, we now got some more weight on the stack. Time for set two. Again, making sure to put myself down into the seat and my legs straight keeping it nice and controlled. It's definitely much harder, only having one hand. Apart from the obvious, adjusting the seat, adjusting the weight, you know, it's getting very difficult. But that's why I'm gonna plow through because I'm very motivated to keep on moving you know and obviously as I've mentioned before I don't know if you've heard but me training my legs keeping the blood flowing around my body is gonna help my pec heal because obviously blood carries nutrients therefore better blood flow the more nutrients in there to help repair and grow better so there's a lot of people saying oh you shouldn't be training you should be resting well no because this is proven to help me get back at back sooner and better back to the gym, so I'm not in here lifting crazy weights, it's just lightweight compared to my usual, 
getting good contractions, good pump, you know, making me feel like I'm doing something. Also, for the fact that it's all up here too, right? Like, if I'm not mentally stable, then my life's gonna be a mess. So I need to be able to be mentally okay to be able to keep getting better, you know? This is very hard for me. I feel like my life has been ruined. So, I have to be able to keep come in here and do something that I've been doing for the last seven years, you know, otherwise I'll fall apart. So, keep positive and we keep, keep busy. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, nearly there. I'm nearly strong. <laughs> the only thing about not having two hands is also I can't pull myself into the seat that much. So I need a seat belt. But there's no seat belts in here. Because <laughs> I gotta, my bum comes out of the seat, which is not good. So I'm trying my hardest to pull down one leg. <laughs> So I also get a lot of questions about my leg training and because I'm very tall, I'm six foot three, that's not the reason why, but it's one of the reasons. I don't squat and I haven't squatted, I mean with a barbell, for years because one, hurts my knees, two, really hurts my lower back, three, I don't actually feel like the output through the muscle you know, on my legs, with my quads and my hamstring. I very much get fatigued before I feel like my legs get fatigued, you know? So there's a few reasons why I don't do back squat. The last one is my flexibility is awful and I can't actually hold the bar. So I always, before this, would choose a hack squat, a V squat, a pendulum squat, you know, where you're in these machines and you're stabilized Therefore, the output from your quads or your hamstrings, you know, glutes, is, is very strong. And uh, total body fatigue is very much less. So you can actually push to failure and be okay, you know? Because, again, when you've got heavy weight on the bar and you're squatting, you also get very scared that you're gonna fall, you know, or injure yourself or something. So being in a machine is a much better idea. So I get a lot of questions about that and that's what I thought I'd just put out there too. I don't squat barbell. I haven't for a while and I will not be. You know, I just don't think it's a good movement and it's not for me. <laughs> However, I really like a leg extension and I've been doing them for years and I always do. And I always do a lot of sets of them, like at least six sets per leg session. 15, at least 12 reps, you know, plus 20. I use very different intensifiers, like paused reps, very slow negatives, like hard isometrics. Um, I also get, I, I full extend, lock out, and I get people to push against it, and I push against them. There's very few different techniques that I use on a leg extension to make it very hard. Because most of the time, the stack is not hard enough. Oh. Ah. Ah. Yeah, I sweat, this is Dubai. And it's nearly summer, so it's nearly 50 degrees here. And as you know, I'm from London. I'm not used to this. <laughs> I also, I'm getting a lot of questions and whatnot about what I'm currently eating, my diet. Obviously, I'm not gonna go through it right now, but I'm just trying my best to keep my meals very clean in terms of having like at least five, four to five de decent meals a day. Good amounts of protein, good carbohydrates. So that again, I don't lose a lot of muscle. <laughs> Obviously, I'm kind of, eating what I want because I just want to enjoy it a bit more, you know, while I'm in this bad state. But I'm still eating like 200 grams of meat four times a day. And I will be until this starts getting much better and then again, I'll up my food. So I'll try to get huge because I shrunk and I'm not huge anymore. <laughs> now we're gonna move on to the linear hack squat, like I said to you before. I also, use this at the moment because again I can put my arm through my legs and use the machine as well if I was going to use a normal hack squat I wouldn't be able to because the load is on my shoulders that would be very bad for me the only problem is is the 
the locking mechanism is actually on the right hand side. So, and unfortunately I can't get it. So we have to get someone else to unlock it while I'm using it. However, it's already loaded, so it's good to go. So we also have to adjust the body. So my arm goes through my legs. Oh. Works quite well, doesn't it, really? But I also like to incorporate these pauses at the bottom, so it makes the exercise much harder. I don't have to put ridiculous loads on there. So when I come down, pause two seconds, drive out. Come down, drive out. Thank you. We'll put a little bit more weight on there. But yeah, definitely takes it out on me. I don't know why, since I've been injured, I'm also getting more out of breath too. <laughs> Obviously it was the two weeks of doing nothing sat in hospital. <laughs> well, I was only in the hospital 10 days, but... <sighs> it's a shame also because the hammer strength leg press there is one of my favorite exercises, but right now I just can't do it because I can't get in and out with one arm. And it's very, it just feels a lot of pressure on my chest. I don't like it, it doesn't feel good. So again, like I said at the start, I'm being very selective with the exercises I'm using because of the injury, you know. I wanna try and be as safe as possible while still being able to train as hard as I can. <sighs> the quads will stay. <laughs> They're not going anywhere. <sighs> That's also the benefit of having a training partner. When I can't reach the, the lever, he's there. But no one wants to train with me, because I'm not big enough anymore. <laughs> I do promise that I had said recently that I always wanted to do YouTube and always have, but again, like I said, never, never really had the confidence to film and do it. But this injury, considering I can't focus on myself and training hard, has made me realize that I need to focus on this sort of more. So when I get back to full strength and, and I've got two arms, I'll definitely be showing you how I used to train and how I will be training going forward for my next show. And when I'm back to 100%, you know, pushing the limits. So make sure you subscribe because otherwise you won't see it. This may be boring, but that won't be. <laughs> Here we go. Come on. So you see, obviously I can train harder, but I just want to keep it a little bit less intense, you know? I'm still scared about this and pushing too hard would be stupid. Still working hard, it's not as hard as usual. How many more have you got? One more. Okay, so we're going to do some adductors. I've changed my mind. I also want to point something out, right? These are glasses. I cannot see without these on. I, a lot of people message me, comment, oh, you stupid goggles, whatever. No, I cannot see without them on, okay? So, like, I'm not wearing them for fashion. They're not blue light blocking goggles. They are glasses, and I cannot see without them I'm on. So, obviously, when I'm training, and I look in the mirror, I need to wear them, right? So, just to clear up that point. <laughs> I always make sure to do my adductors because I'm a bodybuilder when I'm on stage and I'm posing. I don't want you to be able to see the curtain behind me. So, I want to have nice adductors. So there's no hole between my legs. It's not, a, it's not a girl's machine like most people think. If you want big legs, you must be doing this. Getting in and out with one hand is pretty hard too. <laughs> Always making sure to keep the control. Nice squeeze at the top. Sit into the stretch. I 
always make sure that on every exercise I do, I always do at least five sets, you know, like a warm-up set, and then at least four working sets. Maybe I do six sets, but I always aim for four working sets on literally every exercise I do in the gym, no matter what it is. Always four working sets. I do believe that volume needs to be very, not very high, but volume needs to be high for muscle growth. I still believe in the progressive overload too, but like lift as heavy as you can, with as many sets as you can, with as many reps as you can, and that's how you get huge. Simple. It's good? It's filming? Okay, so here we are using a hip abductor. Basically, it's pretty easy. I just want you to concentrate on the form, you know, like coming out slow, keeping the tempo the same. Don't rush, because a lot of people come in there, jerk it out, and then just like drop it back in, you know? Keep the tempo the same on the positive and the negative part of the rep. Get a nice squeeze at the back. So again, sitting up straight, chest up, out, pause, back slow. Out, pause, back slow. Very simple. No jerking. And then next, we're gonna move on to the hamstring curl. Seated hamstring curl again. I really like the lying hamstring curl because I normally come into my forearms, again, making you be able to shorten your hamstrings further than normally just being laying, laying flat. But obviously, I can't actually lay down. So we're just gonna do seated hamstring curl today. Again, when we're doing the exercise, I want you to point your toes. And again, keep it controlled. So I'll go through it and Again, it's hard to adjust the machine. One hand. So again, pointing your toes, come down, contract, nice and slow. Make it sure to crunch down with your back and your abs. A lot of people have got this, it's not good. So crunch down, push your back into the seat, contract, keep the tempo the same. Squeeze at the bottom, point your toes. Ah. Because everyone wants a good set of hanging hams, don't they? Uh. I don't know about you, but hamstring pain isn't the best, is it? Because it feels like it's burning the back of your knee. It feels like it's going to tear off and I don't really like that sensation, especially after what happened. So, it's hard, I've got to grip my teeth and get through it. <laughs> so we added another 20 kilos or so. Again, keeping the same form. Squeeze. Uh. <clears throat> Using my hand to push against the handle, keeping my back against the pad. Oh. Uh. So a few more sets of hamstring curls, then we'll do a seated calf raise, and then that's it for this leg day. Again, like I said, uh, it's a bit different from the usual, but we've got to do what we can with what we have, right? So not having two arms makes everything very difficult. Uh. 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 I feel the burn. <laughs> uh. This leg press is not my favorite, but again, like I've also mentioned, I gotta be able to do something where I can put my leg between, my hat, my arm between my legs, so. It's my little adjusted variation of the hamstring leg press, which I would normally do, because it's easier for me to fit in. You know, it's got a back support and it's not pressing up on my, my shoulders and my chest. So again, again, it's hard to get in, but we're getting. Twist the arm, <laughs> go nice and wide. We're just, I, I kind of like using this like a constant tension exercise, you know, just really, Trying to get a pump on this. OK, 
because I don't want to lose my legs. I've already lost the right side of my body, so I've got to keep something, right? Otherwise, I will be 200 pounds. All right, so here we are, seated calf raise. Again, I would normally be doing standing calf raise too, but I don't want the weight on my shoulders. Um, unfortunately, the locking device is on the right-hand side, and again, can't reach it. So, we've got my, my best friend and my helper <laughs> here to help me. So, <clears throat> she's really my wife-to-be, so I better call her that or she'll be annoyed. <laughs> What I'm aiming to do is keep my feet straight and trying to flex and bring my ankle as far forward as I can. I come up, drive my ankle forward, getting a nice squeeze on the calf. And help me. <laughs> to the rescue. Go. Ah. Keep it in the stretch, get a nice stretch. Come up, contract, squeeze hard. Slow. Squeeze hard. Yeah. I don't have the best calves, but I also don't have bad calves considering I'm six foot three. And up. And stretch. And up. Get two more. And yeah. I need some cows on my, my legs because they ain't cows yet, they're baby cubs. So that's it. That's my one-armed wounded leg workout. Because again, like I said multiple times, it's adjusted because of the injury. Have to be careful, not too much weight, you know, have to be careful that, not to stress this too much. So I'm trying to pick exercises where I, where I feel like it's safe. So that was good. Got a good pump, good blood flow. You know, like hopefully I'll be able to keep my legs and they're gonna shrink up like a raisin. So if you enjoyed the video, please like, please comment, please subscribe so you can again see the ones that are coming up. I'm trying to do my best to involve everything you guys wanna see. So if there's anything you wanna see that I'm not, I haven't covered so far, please comment so I know for the next video. <laughs>